Cedar Point is a place like no other. I've been trying to get here once a year, and lately I've been able to do it. Though I did skip 2019, and 2020 was cut short by rain. So my trip there in July of 2021 was the first time I've ridden most of these coasters in three years. Three years is a long time in coaster years, so I got a nice refresher on a lot of these rides. Today, I want to talk about my honest opinions of the coasters at Cedar Point, some of the park's frustrating policies, and my experience of the park overall. For the second straight year, I got to the park when it was raining. That turned out to be a good thing. It wasn't that bad early on, and it seemed to keep people away from the park on this Friday. This park has been absolutely slammed this year, and with the rain early on, and the threat of thunderstorms later on, I was able to ride a ton of stuff without needing a fast lane. Cedar Point is a huge corporate park, and usually when that's the case, you end up with some very strict policies. For Cedar Point, they're pretty strict on loose articles. I went into the park knowing that Millennium Force and Dragster don't allow anything in the station, at least, nothing that doesn't fit in your pockets. And as for Steel Vengeance, well, that policy changes every year, so I was ready to be surprised. I tried to travel light at Cedar Point, but this time I had an umbrella. I wanted to get footage without getting my lens wet. I rode five coasters in the morning, and each one had a different loose article policy. Raptor had bins, but only one person from your group could walk over there. That's fine. Valraven also has bins, but apparently they're only for shoes, and we got yelled at for trying to stash our stuff in there. Weird. I had no idea. Magnum doesn't have bins, and they made me ride with all my stuff in my hands. That seems safe. Maverick was the normal one. There's bins, and you just go over there and put whatever you want in there. And Steel Vengeance is a mess. There's lockers outside the queue. These are bigger, and they're for backpacks and purses. There are also lockers inside the queue for your phone, keys, and smaller items. And these are free and mandatory. You pass through a metal detector. So I'm standing in line with my small umbrella, and I have no idea if they'll let me stash it in the small lockers. So when we ask the workers at the entrance, in unison, one says yes, one says no. Awesome. Not even the workers can nail down these policies. The worker inside the queue saw my pocket-sized camera, and he said next time I have to put it in a big locker, even though it fits in the small one. It seriously feels like going through TSA to get on Steel Vengeance, and it's not pleasant. But since the park just installed all those free lockers, this seems like the permanent solution. I'm sorry for venting on all these loose article policies, but when you have 17 coasters and seven loose article policies, how could anyone possibly figure it out? Okay, onto the coasters. First up was Raptor, my first ride since 2018, and I ended up getting a ride in the front in the morning, my first ever front row ride, and then a ride in the back later. My main takeaway was the smoothness. I know Raptor doesn't always run super smooth, and it was incredible, so good on the maintenance crew. I also didn't feel the trims hit in the morning, and in the afternoon, they slowed us down a little bit. I didn't care. That back row ride was just madness. So much whip, so much intensity, I felt all of those positive Gs on the Helix, and the whole second half was great. I had a less than great ride on Banshee in 2020, and after these rides on Raptor, I gotta put it back ahead as the best invert in Ohio, and my second favorite overall, just behind Montu. On the flip side of the B&M coin, there was Valraven. I used to say I've never come off Valraven disappointed. I've had so much fun on every cycle, and that's why it was in my top 50. I'd ridden this a bunch of times between 2016 and 2018, but that streak ended in 2021. I mentioned that weird loose article policy, and I ended up having to stuff my umbrella down my shirt, and we also got stuck in the middle row, so I'm sure that all didn't help, but none of the elements really seemed to pop. The drops weren't that good, the inversions were so-so, I just wasn't impressed this time around. Valraven is really going to suffer in my rankings at the end of the year. And then there's Magnum XL200, and oh my god, this ride is just absolutely phenomenal. Look, Steel Vengeance is a masterpiece, and it's the best coaster in the world, but you have to jump through hoops to ride it. I honestly would rather walk onto Magnum and lap that all day and have fun with it. I got three rides on the original Hypercoaster, two in the back and one in the Magic Seat, the most rides I got on any coaster that day. I didn't wait for any of them, even though it was only running one train. For an old arrow, it's really smooth, though I do admit it feels a little janky at the bottom of the big hills, but I was getting airtime on every single hill throughout the ride, and one that nobody seems to talk about is the hill before the turnaround. That one is downright violent. And then the finale tries to launch you into outer space especially on the last three hills. I hadn't ridden the Magic Seat since 2018, and it was just as wild as I remember it, but I still prefer the back. The airtime is still great, but it's less violent. It's also more sustained. Instead of painful, thigh-crushing ejector in the Magic Seat, the back provides a fun combo of floater and ejector. I was raving about Magnum in 2020, and these 2021 rides made me love it even more. Move over X2. Magnum is the top arrow in the world. Next up was Maverick, 
and I only got one ride while the line was short. Even on slower days, this thing racks up a huge line, and this day was no exception. I got the back row, and I felt like it was the same old Maverick. Solid, long ride. The best element is either the first drop, or the launch in the tunnel. And honestly, I don't really care for most of the other elements. The whippy snapback turns and the stangle dives aren't all that pleasant with those soft straps. And I'm just thankful it doesn't have the hard ones anymore. The airtime hills are alright, but the giant bar across your lap makes those pretty irrelevant. It's a fun ride, and my opinion didn't change that much. It may slip a little bit, but maybe I'm a little jaded with Maverick after riding Velocicoaster. Imagine Maverick with Velocicoaster's trains. Now that's something that could sniff my top 10. I finally made my way over to Steel Vengeance for my one ride. And I believe this never opens with the park on weekdays, so we had to wait around a while for it to test and finally open. Go through the colonoscopy and root canal just to get into the station. Row 12 was taken, so I requested row 10, which is my second favorite row. I got kinda stapled by the ops, and we were finally ready to go. There aren't many coasters worth this hassle to get on, but Steel Vengeance is one of them. The first half was phenomenal as usual. Those huge sustained airtime hills, the masterful outer bank, those whippy inversions, the double up, and then the mid-course brake run. For the first time ever, I felt the brakes kick in, and it made the second half totally different. The ejector moments turned into floater moments, including that amazing headshot drop. Those whippy inversions turned into hang time moments. The finale was still strong, so we ended on a good note. I prefer to fly through the second half with all the ejector the ride has to offer, but this ride was different. Still good, but not as good. Steel Vengeance is still my number one. There's no other ride out there loaded with so many great moments over 77 seconds of prime ride time. And this is truly prime ride time. Millennium Force is a ride that disappointed me in 2020. I rode it early in the day and it was just running so slow. By the time I left, I dropped it out of my top 20 overall. I gave it two more tries in 2021. And Millennium Force, you got your chance. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> I got ejector on the first drop, a good pop of air coming over the two camelbacks, and a strong pop on the speed hill. The rest of the ride was all sheer speed and I loved every second of it. I was hoping that 2020 was just a fluke, and this coaster that I've been loving for almost 20 years now had some magic left in it, and it did. I'll have to bump it back up in my end of year rankings. Millennium Force's neighbor, Rougarou, is another coaster that I hadn't ridden since 2018. I've never been too crazy about it, but it's good for a ride. I've been to the park on busy days, and it never has much of a line. Maybe that's because of the good capacity, but more likely, in this park, it's just a forgotten ride. I rode it in the back, and I tried to look for the standout element, and honestly, I couldn't find one. Even though it ran super smooth, I thought it was pretty mundane. Usually a floorless coaster has a good zero-g roll, but this used to be a stand-up coaster, and it doesn't have anything like that. I do like the twister section at the end after the final corkscrew. It doesn't go upside down, but I think it gives the ride some character. All in all, Rougarou isn't a bad ride. It's perfectly… okay. Iron Dragon had a short line, so I decided to give it another go. I've probably only ridden this two or three times in the past, and I always forget how it rides. The first half is just boring and uninspired. The only interesting thing about it is the setting surrounded by trees. As for the second half, the best I can describe it is, Arrow tried their best. They tried to make it good with those swooping turns over the water, but there was just no speed to work with. It's a mild coaster, even for small kids, and this thing has zero bite, unlike its counterparts Ninja, The Bat, or Vortex. Gemini is a favorite of mine, and it was down when I went in 2020, so I made sure to get a ride on both sides. I went from liking it in my early years, to not liking it at all in 2016, to having it redeem itself in 2018 so I wasn't sure what to expect in 2021. First off, this thing glides on its track. It's very smooth for a 43-year-old arrow, with the exception of some side-to-side -side movement in the valleys. It's a long ride, and it does a good job keeping the trains so close together to race. My first ride was before they opened the blue side, so I didn't get to race, but they had both sides going by the late afternoon, and it was running at full capacity. With two trains on each side, this thing is a people eater. I also love the janky airtime moments where you get flung into your little lap bar. If this does get removed sometime in the near future, I would understand because the thing is kind of outdated, but I really hope they don't because it's so much fun. Wicked Twister was just announced to be removed at the end of the summer, a surprise to nobody. This was a rumor for years now, and I'm glad I got one last ride. The back row is the only row on this thing. That backward spike in the back is such a great experience, and it's something you won't find on any other coaster. Otherwise, I thought it was kind of weak. I felt the intensity on the pull-up into the front and back spikes when I rode Steel Venom at Valley Fair, and I did not get down on Wicked Twister. Not a huge deal. It's still a speed machine and I love booster launches. And hopefully it finds a good home somewhere else because a lot of other parks could use this. Last but not least is Blue Streak, the park's oldest operating coaster, and it still offers some of the better airtime in the park. The first half had good airtime, but after that turnaround, the second half was lacking. I still think the ride's running great. Not the smoothest coaster, but you can excuse the mild roughness with the forces it delivers. 
It also had one of the longer lines that we waited in that day. I know there was only one train going, but it still seems popular with the general public. It's in the front of the park, which helps, but it's not that easy to find. You have to split off the main midway and walk under Raptor to find the entrance. But people still seem to really enjoy this, and I'm one of them. So which rides did I end up skipping on this day? The one that stands out is Top Thrill Dragster. This either had a long line when I passed by it, or it was broken down. I think this ride is generally overrated, so I didn't want to hang around and wait a long time to ride it, or wait around for it to get fixed. And there's never a guarantee that just because it's up, it won't break down 5 minutes later. I rode this in 2020, so I didn't make a big effort to ride it this time. I also skipped Corkscrew. I probably should have snagged a ride, but I just really don't like it. It's uncomfortable, and not that exciting, and I had just ridden Corkscrew at Valley Fair and Michigan's Adventure, so it was a hard pass. I also skipped Cedar Creek Mine Ride, which is another old and weak coaster. Maybe the kids like it, but I don't think I even passed by it that day. Finally, Gatekeeper was closed all day. Its chain had broken not too long before, and they needed so many error-free test runs to open it. So I saw it testing, but they never got it open that day. Overall, really awesome trip to Cedar Point. The rain early, and the threat of rain later drove away the crowds, and there was an absolute downpour right as we were leaving anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. I still think Kings Island is a better park overall, mainly due to its atmosphere, their operations, and they just seem to be managed better. But Cedar Point is just so massive, and it's impossible to get bored here. The biggest disappointment was Valraven, and maybe this was similar to my 2020 ride on Millennium Force. Maybe it was just a bad ride in a bad row. I'll have to give it another shot next time I go. The biggest surprise was how great Raptor was running. Incredibly fast and whippy, and the smoothest was a nice surprise. And Magnum. I just can't say enough about this thing. It's just a janky riot from start to finish, and I put it in the same camp as Raging Bull. I can ride this all day. Let me know if you've ridden these this year, and what you think. If you shared the same experience I had, or if you had something totally different, sound off in the comments below. I'll do a video with my official ranking of all the coasters. And I had one viewer suggest maybe including every coaster that's been in the park since Blue Streak, their oldest operating coaster, so we can rank up all the more recently to fun coasters too. But for this video, I just wanted to talk about my most recent experience with these coasters. I was able to get on almost every one, and a lot of them I hadn't ridden in over 3 years. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and love coasters, be sure to sub and hit the bell for more content just like this. Also, be sure to check out my links below for my Discord server, where you can chat with other fans of the channel, as well as my second channel, where I post copyright-free off-ride footage. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.